Today we're going to go through the air tightness layer in a, in a fair bit more detail. So in early videos we covered off that an important principle of the house um, is to ensure that it's airtight. Um, two main purposes for this. One, that our controlled air temperature internally, we don't want to lose that uh, conditioned air externally um, out through holes in the fabric or around windows and doors. Um, and another one is, uh, another important principle is around uh, moisture management of the house. So uh, on moisture management, because it's probably the less uh, known uh, effect on, on most houses, particularly in colder climates, but it is a, an issue here in environments and, and climates such as Sydney. But uh, you, the typical house would have a fair amount of uh, condensation, so moisture within the wall, which is a bit of an issue because it helps promote uh, growth of algae and, uh, and bacteria and fungal. Um, so with, uh, with the air tightness layer, what it helps control is the movement of moisture through the wall. Uh, so typical to a house, if it's cold on the inside, uh, hot on the outside, uh, moisture is going to want to move internally. And if the barrier, if there is a barrier that doesn't allow moisture to move through, you're going to get condensation on the inside of plasterboard. Um, if it's cold outside and, and, and hot inside, you're going to want have, you're going to have moisture wanting to move outside through the wall. And if you're house isn't airtight, you'll get a lot more moisture moving through and uh, if you have a non-breathable membrane on the outside, you'll get condensation on the inside of that layer. So typically if people use foil back sarking that doesn't allow moisture and, and air to breathe uh, through that barrier, you'll get condensation on the inside. So what, uh, what this product um, is developed to, to perform is that in colder climates, uh, it'll allow um, minimal moisture to move through the barrier. So if it's, if it's actually uh, cold um, on the outside, uh, you'll have your internal moisture wanting to move through and it will minimise the amount of moisture that will actually move through the wall from inside or out to limit condensation inside the wall. But what's quite unique is that uh, when it's cold inside and warm outside and the moisture will want to transfer through, so in summer months, it'll actually allow the moisture to move through the wall and inside so you don't get condensation on the inside of the wall uh, in those times. So moisture management is, uh, is fairly <coughs> important for this pilot house and for all homes really to ensure that we don't get uh, build up of bacteria and, and fungals uh, inside the wall. Um, we don't have mold spores and certain things so it's a much healthier environment. Um, but back on uh, another important principle is just to ensure uh, that the house is completely airtight, that if we're putting uh, energy into heating or cooling a home or maintaining that temperature, that we're not losing that through uh, unnecessary holes and gaps in the wall. Um, so uh, this barrier air tightness layer provided by, um, it's an Intello product provided by ProClimber. Um, it's developed particularly for this, this purpose. When it's installed, we ensure that all, all laps are completely sealed, that the actual barrier itself is completely sealed against all window and door openings, um, that it's sealed against the floors as well. Um, we're up on a level one floor at the moment, so when the joists were installed, we, we put a layer and wrapped the joists uh, completely, that the, the internal layer on a first floor can come down and actually seal on that layer, and from below it'll seal up uh, under the base of that wrap around the joist as well. So the air house is completely airtight. Um, because of the nature of the house, we've got a quite, we've got a detailed structure. Um, you know, a fairly large attic space upstairs. Um, we, uh, we've got a, I guess it's a challenge for us to get a really high air tightness um, performance of the house because the need to be able to wrap around, as you can see there's a fair bit of detail involved with having to wrap around spaces like this where we've got joinery being installed, um, around dormers um, as well. There's a, a lot of work involved in, in this uh, house in particular. So I think when, um, you know, it's, it's a European um, standard that if they're looking at trying to build a house that performs ultimately, you know, when it comes to, a, to an air tightness um, perspective is that they'll ensure that the ratio of external facade surface area is at a minimum. So, you know, obviously the, uh, the, the best way of doing that is to build literally a cube or a box. So you have the minimal amount of external facade area to, to floor space ratio. 
Well, with, with us, you know, we want to make sure we have a functional home that looks fantastic as well. So, you know, that's been a driving factor. We didn't want to really compromise that. So, um, you know, we've got a, a, a huge amount of surface area per floor area. Um, and that's just the nature of the style of home that we're dealing with. Uh, so, you know, to, to get a, a very high uh, level of air tightness is going to be tough. Um, you know, in Europe, they try to target an air change of, of say, one volume of the house per hour. Uh, the average house in probably Australia would be around 50, 60 air changes of volume per hour if the house was tested under 50 pascals. So, um, you know, I, I think if we can achieve anywhere under 10, getting it down to between two to five would be a great result and would definitely achieve um, the, the requirement that we need here to, to ensure the house is at one achieving that nine and a half star um, energy rating where we've we've got on paper um, but to, to also minimize um, the amount of heating and cooling we need in the home. So today we're going to undertake a blower door test on the house um, and what it does is it puts a negative pressure on the house by drawing air out through the front door. Uh, we've got a consultant an expert who's come in and he's going to tape uh, a fan to the entry door and pull and draw air out of the house and that's going to put pressure on our outside fabric and we can walk around quite easily with the back of our hand and and find obvious areas of where air is leaking through uh, any holes in tape um, around any surfaces through doors and windows so we can I guess had that opportunity before plasterboard and other linings and finishes go on uh, internally we can get a chance to go around and and fix those up so it's an important step that uh, by doing it uh, you get to um, see the effect of, of what you've done and if there's an opportunity to improve it it's at that point before linings go on okay we've just had a look around the house and i'm um, just about to start a test So the test is done and that process was, was fantastic. Um, it really helped us highlight where we need to focus our attention on, on um, sealing and taping up certain areas and adjusting some of the windows and doors to, to minimise air leakage. So we'll spend a couple of days detailing the house up before plasterboard linings are due to commence. And uh, I think the result's going to be much improved and it'll be at the level we require. Uh, and we'll be back once the house is complete to re redo a, a new test and we'll post that video to see what the actual result is. And, uh, and that'll occur at uh, completion of the house.